Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be another editing tutorial, specifically cinemagraphs. I put this one up on my Instagram and you guys seem to like it. I asked if I should do a tutorial on it and you said yes, so here we are. So stay tuned to find out how I did it. But first, before we even start this, I've got to take my jumper off because it is very hot in my room. One sec. Chuck that, we don't need this. All right, so pretty much you want to start off by taking a photo. Obviously, you need a photo. So the way I'm going to describe it is there are two types of cinemagraphs. The first type is a video where you'll need a sturdy tripod and something that's moving. So maybe something like a waterfall or something where everything else around it is still and then the water is moving like in a waterfall. So what you'll do there is you'll take the video of the waterfall and then in post-production you'll freeze everything around it so just the water is moving and everything else is still. I'm not going to be talking about that one today because I haven't really done that. I think I've done it once. But the one that I uploaded recently was a photo and it's really easy to do. So we'll jump into my computer, not literally, metaphorically, and I'll show you how I did it. So the first step that you need to do is take a photo, whether that may be something interesting like I've done here. I've got a jar of fairy lights and I've held it out in front of a sunset. So take a photo of something interesting, something that has elements that you can change. like. For instance, I've got lights here and you can try this exactly the same way as I did if you want. Um, you can take a photo with fairy lights if you like. I've put that photo up in Lightroom. I've put my edit on it here as you can see. Convenient notification on my phone. So as you can see here, I've put my edit on it. I've created a virtual copy in Lightroom, made the jar slightly brighter. So I've got the darker version here, then I've created a lighter version um, and I just got the brush tool by pressing K on your keyboard and then I brushed around the jar and pretty much just put the brightness up. So step number two is you want to export both of these photos into a folder on your desktop and then open them up in Premiere Pro. So we'll go do that now. We'll call it, we'll call it light change. Very creative. Change it to light changing. Once again, very creative. No, we can just leave that at whatever, it doesn't really matter as long as it's not the original raw file because you don't want to be editing 43 megabyte files in uh, Premiere Pro. So we'll open a new project and we'll call it Light Change. Once again, just save it to the desktop wherever. I usually just save it to the desktop, then my desktop ends up completely messy after and I have to clean it all up, but that's the way we do it. It's going to go over to the finder here, import those two files. So we have the dark one and the light one. So we'll go and drag them into Premiere Pro now, into the timeline. All right, so what you want to do is have the darker one on the bottom layer and then have the light one on the top layer. So we'll drag that one up here because that's a dark one and that's a light one. And pretty much it's going to change like this, but we're going to do some other adjustments, but it's going to go from dark to light essentially. So. We want that to happen, but we want it to happen a bit smoother. So it's as simple as putting a cross dissolve on it. So if you type in, in your effects up here, go onto cross dissolve and just drag that onto the top layer, which is the brighter image. So you want one at the start and at the end of each, um, each clip. So now you can see if I play it from the start, it goes from dark, fades to a lighter image and then fades back to the dark, but it looks like the lights are turning on and off. So that cross dissolve helps a lot rather than just having the image go from dark to light. It doesn't look real. So after we've done that once, we want to just pretty much drag out the bottom layer here to say 19 seconds, doesn't really matter. Keep it short. You don't want to go over 20 seconds, I feel, for a cinemagraph because you want it to loop um, so the person can keep watching it. So we're just going to drag this top layer, hold down option or alt and then drag it across and it's just going to create a copy of it. You can just have it go pulsing from dark to bright. But you might notice right now that it's actually going a bit too slow. So we're going to just drag these cross dissolves a bit more. So it looks like more of a light flashing rather than slowly turning on. Even quicker than that. Then we can shorten this. Like this. And then we'll just drag our clip so it's shorter, so it's like a pulse of light. So like, something like this. Yeah, that's all right, something like that. So we can highlight this, create a copy of it, and just 
pretty much put it throughout here. So now if we play it from the start again, it goes light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. So essentially that's how I made this cinemagraph. You can go and add a song to it if you like, and then just match it up to the beat of the song, but pretty self-explanatory there. I don't think you need me to show you how to do that. Um, but yeah, I hope you liked this tutorial. It's a bit of a quick one, but I know a lot of you wanted to know how I did it. So here it is for this video. I'm going to be making more things like this in the future. Maybe a bit more intricate ones, but yeah. You have to like this video right now if I get this right. Ready? Three, two, one. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Okay, three, two, one. But if you found this useful, you know what to do, like, comment, all that sort of stuff. If you want to see more tutorials like this, hit the subscribe button to stay updated and I'll see you in the next video.